Hello, my name is Dr Kai Bird. I am Principal Researcher at Marla Maritime Technologies and Knowledge Transfer Associate at the National Oceanography Centre. This presentation will provide an overview of a novel technique for surveying and monitoring large areas of the coast over long periods of time using ground-based marine radar. This technique has been developed as part of a collaborative project between engineers at Marla Maritime Technologies, researchers at the National Oceanography Centre and scientists at the University of Liverpool. This research was supported by European Regional Development Funding through the Centre for Global Eco-Innovation and the ARCOS project. Coastal areas are vital to our societies and economies. Many of the largest industries, such as international trade, inshore fisheries, tourism and energy generation, rely on using the finite resources at coast. Human development at the coastline, including residential property, industrial warehousing, new power infrastructure and the construction of local amenities, has continued despite warnings of sea level rise and increasing pressure as a result of climatic change. These rising pressures can include increased storm magnitude and frequency, which can significantly erode the valuable intertidal area, which often serves as a dissipative buffer against high energy waves. Because of the fixed nature of hard engineering methods which currently dominate coastal engineering and defence, the coastline is not able to naturally adapt to these pressures, and intertidal areas are being squeezed out or degraded on a global scale. It is for this reason that now more than ever we require more efficient and effective ways of monitoring these vulnerable areas. Current methods of collecting topographical survey data over large intertidal areas are expensive and time consuming due to the difficulty and access imposed by the rising and falling tide, and too often these data are rendered obsolete rapidly following a season of storms or a period of dynamic change. Radar-based remote sensing offers a potential solution. It is a very mature and common technology in coastal environments. Many ports, harbours and marinas operate a system, and the technology is well understood. While the traditional task of radar is to search and track vessels and to assist navigation and defence, it can also be used as a powerful imaging device to observe the sea surface. It has been used in the hydrographic and ocean science industry to derive wave spectra, wave heights and subtidal bathymetry. This research fills a vital piece in the puzzle by allowing topographical data to be collected in complex intertidal areas. The method presented here enables intertidal areas to be mapped within 4 kilometres of a radar to a good accuracy when compared to a LiDAR survey. Marine radar is a ground-based sensor. Usually deployed on a tower or a ship, it rotates around 360 degrees, projecting electromagnetic energy at each angle. Some of that energy is reflected from hard targets in the environment, such as ships, buildings or buoys, and some of that energy is reflected from the sea surface itself. Radar operating at X-band, around the 9 to 10 gigahertz range, generate electromagnetic waves with wavelengths on the centimetre scale. These interact with wind-driven ripples of a similar wavelength on the sea surface itself, which causes strong reflections from waves and rough seas. Usually these signals are treated as interference and filtered out in the search for ships and small vessels, which are often obscured by sea clutter. However, these signals from the sea surface contain vital information on the hydrodynamics of the coastline. We are able to use sequences of radar images collected over the course of a full two-week spring neap tidal cycle to map the topography of beaches and sandbanks. A radar antenna rotating at 25 RPM generates an image every 2.4 seconds. This volume is quite difficult to handle, so these images are averaged into time exposure images lasting 10 minutes each. This focuses the signals of breaking waves into a cohesive waterline pattern seen on the image and the video here. If we analyse the changing signal of pixel intensities from a given location on the image, we will see a cycle of high and low intensities as the tidally driven waterline moves across the intertidal zone as the tide rises and falls. This temporal signal of a spatially transgressing waterline reveals the times at which a given pixel transitions from being wet to dry. If we have a reliable record of tidal elevations, we can match these transitions to a given elevation. This allows the topographical elevation at each pixel in a radar image to be resolved. The research paper detailing this patented methodology is available open access from the Journal of Coastal Engineering. Initial research and development for this technique took place in the D estuary in the northwest UK. 
a radar system was deployed for a three-year period on a tower on Hilbury Island. This is a brilliant site for trialling new radar techniques due to the high tidal range of more than 10 metres at maximum spring tide and a very complex local geomorphology. The estuary features intertidal flats, beaches, mud flats, salt marshes and sandbanks within the radar vision. This long data set allowed for validation and testing under a range of weather conditions and the robustness of the radar system was demonstrated. The accuracy of the technology was tested by comparing the elevation results to an airborne LIDAR flight and found to be in good agreement. The radar was able to detect the wreck of the SS Nestos to the northeast, a Greek cargo ship that was stranded and sunk on the sandbanks in 1941, trying to find its way into the Mersey estuary. The critical advantage of the radar over traditional survey techniques is the continuous nature of radar recording. A survey was generated every two weeks for three years in the D estuary and the migration of large intertidal bars was observed across the beach. While the features shown migrating on this video appear small, they are in fact several hundred metres long by several metres high, thus representing many thousands of cubic metres of sand moving around the tidal area. While this situation is quite benign on this beach, if that sand were about to fill a navigation channel, block a power station inlet, or being moved away from a coastal defence structure, it would be a very serious issue. Better observation of this change will enable decisions to be made more effectively by coastal managers. In addition to observing long-term morphological change, the radar is also able to observe changes resulting from a given storm event at any point during the deployment. This image shows changes in the beach elevation resulting from the impacts of the storm Brita in 2006. This was a relatively modest storm, but the changes in elevation can be seen, especially by the flattening of the intertidal bar and the redistribution of significant amounts of sediment in the seaward direction. This is a vital aspect of radar observation, in that storm effects are relatively hard to predict, as they vary based on the state of the tide, prevailing wind, incident wave angles and the substrate of the beach. It is also very difficult logistically to mobilise and deploy traditional survey technologies before and after a storm in order to capture changes. Marlin Maritime Technologies have recently deployed a containerised radar survey platform to Crosby Beach north of Liverpool in support of a local council initiative to monitor beach changes over the winter storm season. This beach has traditionally faced systematic erosion year on year. It is important to monitor due to its proximity to the navigation channel and the new terminals at the port of Liverpool. This deployable radar system is brought on a high ab truck and dropped into position. Inside the container is a 10 meter extendable mast with a radar and a camera mounted on top. The system can also be powered by solar panels and a wind turbine when deployed to remote locations without mains power. This figure shows a time exposure radar image from this deployment. The waterline to the west is clear at low tide, as is the sea clutter in the navigation channel. Bobo Bank sandbanks are shown as dark features to the west, as dry sand is not a good radar target relative to the sea surface around the sandbanks, their location is clear. Several navigation buoys can be seen in the channel, and a scattering of targets to the south are the Crosby Iron Men, a set of sculptures named Another Place by artist Anthony Gormley. The methodology discussed earlier on in this presentation was applied to the data collected from this site, and the figure shows a surface plot colour-coded by elevation, with blue areas representing low elevations and red areas high. These data were collected at a very high resolution, with the radar set to short pulse and data projected onto a 3 meter grid. The Crosby Ironmen can clearly be seen with a higher elevation than their surroundings. In addition to intertidal topography, radar data can provide a wealth of extra information. Colleagues at the National Oceanography Centre are able to use the same data set to derive information on subtidal bathymetry and surface currents giving versatility to a radar deployment in support of coastal management. This radar technology has many applications to coastal management and science. The diagram shows just some of the interconnected aspects at play within the coastal management industry. You have both human and environmental forcings, 
that intersect and are observed as the processes of erosion, accretion, etc. We are then able to gather data on those processes using a variety of technologies, which then feed into hydrodynamic models and give information to aids to management, which are in turn used to influence coastal management decisions and ultimately shoreline management plans. This then affects the anthropogenic forcings as we change and engineer the environment at the coastline. There are many potential end users for this technology, including local councils and port authorities, who are responsible for managing a large area of the coast that can be at risk from erosion, flooding or adverse accretion. They have dredging and channel maintenance obligations and are under constant budgetary constraints, and the radar represents a cost-effective monitoring solution. Coastal engineering consultancies and contractors tasked with constructing coastal defences must be able to monitor the behaviour of the coast before, during and after the construction process. Radar systems also provide an ideal technique to monitor sandscaping and beach recharge projects. Finally, scientific research projects seek to better understand patterns of changing coastal morphology over long periods of time in relation to climate change and human developments and the radar system represents an ideal technology for that task. In summary, any efforts to increase coastal resilience must be monitored to ensure that they are performing well and not negatively affecting the system. Current methods of surveying these dynamic areas are expensive and data quickly become obsolete. Radar allows continuous observation over large areas of the coast. Data collected from monitoring campaigns can be used as input data to train and validate coastal models. The combination of monitoring current and modelling future changes at the coast allows powerful database decision making in coastal management. Marlin Maritime Technologies are now deploying multiple sensors in vulnerable locations around the UK coastline to gain a better understanding of the resilience of our coastlines in response to changing conditions in the face of climate change and continued human development at the coast. Thank you very much for your attention. Feel free to get in touch if you would like more information.